Hi, this is Biffle Cup with the Try Hard Podcast, episode 22, with game developer for Rude Ghost Games, James Johnston, with featured music by Decaying Tigers. question first question okay james johnston tell us a little bit about yourself um my name is james i'm a game developer from um, boston massachusetts in the united states of a uh i uh, I, i've been around a few of the, the the scenes in boston um people always tell me they're like you're fit, you're famous everyone knows you and i'm like i I think that's only because my circle is like this big. So like everybody's like, oh my God, you know, everyone. I'm like, I know like 12 people and they just all know each other. So I do video game stuff. I make video games. I'm making video games for about six years or so, seven years or so. Working on them and then making my own. And uh, what else? Uh, you know, you know, I, I always wanted to make chiptune. It's still on my list. I, You know, now that my video game's over, I'm going to become a pianist. I'm going to start learning the piano again because I fell off because... You know, life gets in the way. And uh, um, I am, uh, I don't have any other weird talents. I can't, I was going to say I juggle, I bake, but I can't do any of those. Um, I don't have a weird talent. I guess if video, making video games is a weird talent, that's my talent. But I don't have like a party trick. Don't we get to comment on his his answers here? Because yeah, I heard a little. that you went Maybe to little. Ireland to... Uh, Announced Miss um, uh, Ireland. Oh yeah, that was years ago. Yeah, yeah. My uh, it was the weirdest thing where I was the one. 
American guy in a group of like 65 Irish guys. <laughs> and, uh, I had never been outside of the, well, I was born in Germany, but I had never been outside the U.S. since, you know, one, one years old. Yikes. Um, and so I, I mean, it was the safest place I could have gone as like a guy who didn't know anything, right? Of like, Ireland, great. Everybody speaks <laughs> English. Everybody likes to hang out. Yeah, yeah, I went to Ireland to do this. Basically, it was like uh, this big, I mean, it was like a tourism thing, but it's like this big talent show, basically, with all these like crazy talented uh, um, Irish women. And it's kind of like a like who gets to be crowned like the, the rose of, of Tralee is the name of the the town oh. the town in the city in 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 County Kerry in, in Ireland, and uh, you think like oh it's a talent show like what are they gonna do like sing what are they gonna do and it was like I mean they did stuff that you'd expect but then like some woman was like yo my talent I'm gonna light my hands on fire and then do a trick and then put them out and I was oh, like shit I thought you were gonna like read a poem but like no you're like doing like pyrotechnics oh so shit. it was awesome she, it was just surprising because she came out with a tuba that was as big as her she's like you know about to bust out this jam on the tuba and i was like <laughs> nah, but that, it was like my it was, dude it was like a dope it was like a tuba solo and you gotta be a good tuba tubaist to do a tuba solo um and then actually i, I made pretty good friends with them there was a filmmaker who was from Toronto because it's always people from around the world with like Irish heritage. And we actually hung out uh, last year. Um, so like still, still kicking it, but it was very weird to be the, uh, the nerdy, <laughs> the nerdy skinny dude with glasses. who was like, yeah, I, I like Nintendo. And these guys were like, I mean, some of these dudes were like farmers, like straight up farmers, like <laughs> Jack, like men of the earth. Like, I mean, total respect. I'm just like, yo, you could, you could like, like, stick a stick for me and use me to like <laughs> fill the fields right like you guys could like one of you could take my legs one of you could take my arms and run in opposite directions i'm dead but they were super nice they they like they they didn't get like my scene at all because i'm like a friggin weird internet kid but but they were super nice it was just weird to kind of be thrown in the middle and the weirdest thing i'll say was because i like to sing like goofy snippets of pop songs right but Irish people really love to like sing songs, right? And they're like, we'll go to the pub, we'll sing some songs, we'll have a fire, and we'll all like have a big sing along, right? Um, and I'm like, I, I was like so white, it was like my my luggage didn't come with me to Boston, so I literally was I like I got the underwear that's on me, and that's it, and I don't know when I'm getting my luggage back. And so I'm like, I'm so wiped out. I was flying, all this stuff happened. I just want to like get to take go to bed, right? So it was the first night, and they we we were sleeping out in the woods for for reasons I don't need to get into. In there. Ireland, yeah, yeah, it was like a training kind of thing to get all the guys to know each other and stuff. So, <laughs> and I had done the Boy Scouts, so I was used to this. But I'm in the tent, and you can hear them singing like what you would think are like traditional like Irish songs, right? Like what you think in your head. They were singing it, and I'm just about to fall asleep. I'm like in the tent alone because all the guys are like, we drove ten minutes down the street, we didn't fly, and I'm like exhausted. Just as I'm about to fall asleep, they all start singing. Teenage Dirtbag by Weedus. No, <laughs> way. that song is like still played on the radio. All that song is fucking huge in Ireland still. It was oh, like the wow. radio was like Weedus, and then it was like Drake songs that we had already heard like six years ago. <laughs> um, but it was just the most surreal thing. I thought I was dreaming. It was just like imagine like imagine you're trying to sleep and then you hear like sixty men all in perfect harmony start singing no dirt no my weedus. and then it's like <laughs> did i lock the doors oh wait it's a tent i can't lock the tent help oh man yeah that was my irish adventure i uh, started from the bottom immediately after oh my god that was my adventure yeah i just i i went to japan as well beginning of this year which was nuts because we left right before they started locking everything up but uh okay. i had never really been out of the country for ireland it was like a whole i mean it was like the, the easiest mode it was easy mode so then I was like, okay, I feel prepared to go to a country where, like, they still speak some English, but, like... What do you I mean, easy maybe. mode? You, like, get out the plane going and, Ireland, like, have like, no... go. Well, like, I've never been to a foreign country, you know, you know, a country outside the U.S. I'm ner you know, I, I just get nervous about stuff, so I was like, Ireland would be, like, level one, right? you got to yeah. work your way up, you know? Canada, Ireland. Well, I mean, you yeah. might have the language, but, like, you're saying you wash your, your luggage and, like, the first night you went camping. In, like, a Okay, it was pretty hard. Country. I kind of permanently messed up my knee because they made me climb a mountain. So, like, that sucked. But the mountain climb is really fun and beautiful. Oh, wow. Um, I was also there when they were filming uh, Last Jedi. 
the second of the new no Star Wars movies, and they were filming it in Ireland. So Holy they had shit. built. They were like, yeah, like if we went like fifty miles through the farm like this way, they built like a Jedi temple or whatever. It was like no. a set. Yeah. Oh yeah, that That's was in so Ireland. Cool. Yeah, you're right. Like Luke's temple, right? I didn't get to go. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh, I said. God. I said. You will take me to the Jedi. Okay, that's a little nerd humor for you. You know, we love to laugh around here. Am I right? Well, your dad um, is kind of so. If I remember correctly, your dad is like a game maker too, but he does he does board games. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. My dad is is also a local uh, game maker guy. He he does board and card games for kids, and and uh, he's got his own like crew or whatever, right? And and people have asked, did I do it because of him? And I'm like, I just think it's so funny. He's like, no, we have no relation, like. Uh, in fact, I've played more of his games than he has of mine. I'll say that much. What does he think of your games? I don't think he's played any of them. Um, Dad, because he, I, I don't think he's he kind of he has like two computer games that he plays. Uh, he kind of stopped playing a lot of computer games though. He used to play like a couple a lot. He was like a guy where he gets like three games. He plays a lot of them. Dude, there was this game. I don't know if you guys heard it. I don't know how big it was, but it was after the Lord of the Rings movies came out, or while they were still coming out. There was a game called Battle for Middle Earth. You ever hear of this game? Did you play like Warcraft or Starcraft? Yeah. yeah. It was that, but Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So really? you would you would have the like the race. It was like okay, you could play as the orcs. You could play as like the orcs yeah, yeah, with yeah, like yeah. Saruman. You could play as the obviously the humans, but like the horsemen and and Gondor, Rohan and Gondor. People and my dad was like game. number four in the world leaderboards at one point, or like number two. He no. was up there. No. Because he was just playing it, and then, like, people stopped playing it, and, like, he just beat people because, like, the number of people went down. But he he would only play, like, two or three video games, right? Um, oh, damn. But the thing is, my, my youngest sister uh, is in college, or, or, no, she's in grad school in L.A., and she was like, yikes, things are getting hot. I'm getting out of here, right? Like, near the start of COVID. Oh. So she's at home in, in Massachusetts with my family, with my parents now at my parents' place. And she bought uh, Pixel Puzzle Makeout League, and and she's I'm telling her I'm like you got to beat it on your own, <laughs> and then because once you beat the game you can skip all the puzzles, and then I'm like you can just set it up in the TV, you get a little family like movie night, and just show my parents like all the cutscenes and stuff. So that counts. I'll yeah. count that, right? But you know my my dad, yeah, he 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 does game stuff too. I don't know. He, you know what? <laughs> he worked on Pixel Puzzle Makeout League for something that I I literally can't even say what he did because it's a huge spoiler. You can't even tell. Oh. He's the final boss. No, I'm just kidding. No, he Is worked he? on something. <gasps> he did the yeah, I get to defeat him. No, he did something. He did something for the ending that I that I can't no spoil. way. Ah. All right. Well, yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about um, Pixel Puzzle Makeout League. Sure. Yeah, Pixel Puzzle Makeout League is is developed by Rude Ghost, but uh, uh, it, it's a game. Uh, it is it is the. Uh, I'm trying to think because I've been thinking of new ways to kind of describe it to people. Uh, I, I'm calling it. Um, I'm calling it the JRPG of of puzzle games i'm calling it the paper mario of dating sims where <laughs> it's uh it, it's a puzzle based dating sim where you play as a puzzle themed superhero uh, named pixel girl and she solves these puzzles called pixel puzzles and these kind of puzzles are like uh they're not as like popular obviously as like i feel like everybody right in the world knows sudoku but um they're like puzzles where you're solving you have these numbers that are like hint numbers and you're basically filling out like a picture. Like the numbers tell you how to paint the picture. And then when you paint the correct picture, um, you win the puzzle, right? And so the, I, I love these puzzles. Nintendo made a bunch of these games. They called it Picross. Uh, I didn't call it that because they legally have a trademark in it in some regions of the world. Um, but but it, it's, yeah, you're, you play as this puzzle superhero. And so every time she has a problem, you solve these puzzles and they all are like an image. So like if she's like locked in a room, she might solve a puzzle of like a key, right? When you finish a puzzle, it looks like a key and then she can use it to get out. And uh, because uh, one puzzle themed superhero wasn't enough, I decided we should have a bunch of them and just do a bunch of puzzles because it'd be really funny to have like, we literally have like a Sudoku themed uh, superhero. We have a crossword themed superhero. We got a chess themed superhero and we have a, a giant anthropomorphic jigsaw piece. That you can date, and she Pisa. just has like a big cartoon face. Yeah, Picia, Picia. The yeah. joke is because we don't have voice acting. That's the thing too. Is like some games you might look at a game, you're like, oh, what? No voice acting. The joke is that there's no right or wrong way to pronounce her name, and that joke only works if you don't have voice acting. So we're like, we're gonna write in a bunch of these jokes. We're like, it's only funny if you can only read it. Like if someone read it, <laughs> it wouldn't be as funny. Um, 
but then the, yeah the idea it turned into like a comedy i love like dating sim games i think those are really fun like when done well um so i thought yeah what if it was just like a fun superhero dating game and then it was kind of funny because the concept is just silly is like there's like a crossword themed superhero okay what if there's like you know in spider-man when like the train's gonna go off you know the the tracks it's like okay spider-man uses spider powers to stop it yeah if you had crossword powers what are you gonna do like solve a puzzle like what are you gonna do like that train's gonna crash so so the idea is like they're superheroes but they're like actually completely like totally useless superheroes <laughs> and they have to figure out like well, what are we supposed to do like we're superheroes but like we can't really help anyone so how are we going to use the power of like sudoku to like improve people's lives improve our own lives and so it's kind of like a a, a a a journey of self-discovery right and and the story goes places and so it's like a dating sim, but it's also got some of that, like, you know, Marvel, like, apocalyptic, like, there's a villain, bad guys, the world's in danger, mixed with, like, all right, let me get a little action on the side, right? <laughs> yeah. And that's how the game starts. I know you guys played a bit of it on your channel, but it's really funny. I just thought it'd be the funniest thing is, like, all right, there's superheroes, and the world is, like, slightly threatened, and they're like, all right, cool, let's go investigate. Let's go solve the mystery. Why is this, this villain? He showed up. He's threatening everybody. What are we going to do? And then they just kind of forget about it and go on dates. And then they come back and they're like, oh, shoot, we didn't do anything. Like, we got to, like, get serious. So so it's a game that's, like, on the surface seems like kind of one thing, but then it, it kind of turns into another thing. But uh, it's a very kind of, like, human story. Because, again, we were talking in the pre-show, is like, is this, like, a bunch of awkward people? And, like, I think people would, like, rather than, like, oh, I want to date all these sexy characters who want to, like, get their hands on me, it's more like, oh yeah, these are kind of like more awkward, real people. And sometimes like you're on a first date and you just say the wrong thing and you're like, bro, I don't know if I'm going to recover, right? It's like, I might not recover from this. And But it's like, you get to play as sometimes as the character is like, yo, I know you just said something weird, but I get that you're nervous. So like, it's all good, right? Like, so I wanted to have that vibe too. Cause I think that's a little more realistic and, and more fun. Cause not a lot of games do that, right? A lot of the dating sims are like, you know, there's like this Japanese brand of dating sim where it's like you're the girl, you have all the hot guys, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, over you. And it's like we could do that, but like I think it'd just be more fun to just be like, oh, the hot guy is like leaning in and he like falls on his face. You're like, <laughs> yeah. you need like a tissue, you're bleeding. So comedy romance game, puzzles, dating, funny dialogue, cool characters. That's Pixel Puzzle Maker League. It's the JRPG of puzzle games. It's the Paper Mario of dating sims. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
So were you trying to just like, what was the original idea? You were just like, I like, well, obviously you like dating sims, and then you were just like, I like pixel, like I like, how do you say it? Like pixel puzzles? Pixel puzzles. Pixel, pixel puzzles. puzzles. Yeah. So, They're uh, called like nautograms, they're called Picross, like Nintendo, they have a couple names, but we call them pixel puzzles, because it's pixel art. Yeah, so, so my idea for the game was like, I wanted to make like a story game, right? And I love these puzzles. So my idea was, uh, well, they were kind of separate. Oh, I want to do story games. I want to do story games when I grow up. That'd be so much fun. And then like, oh, I really love these puzzles. I'm addicted to these puzzles. But then I was like, oh, well, well, all the answers to the puzzles are art of stuff, right? When you finish the puzzle, you get a piece of art. And that's just fun. But, oh, I could do the art that's just exactly themed with what's happening in the story, right? right. So that was the main idea. And at first it was like a really serious, it was like someone's memories were lost. So you got to solve the puzzles. And it's like, unlock a picture from their past so it's like oh the beach oh i remember me and my girlfriend went to the beach like i remember that memory what happened to my girlfriend like like a kind of mystery and i was like that kind of sucks like that's lame like let's not do like a dramatic <laughs> and and like i think superheroes are fun I, i'm like way behind on my marvel movies i'm not crazy about them but i'm like all right well like the thing that makes the most sense to me is like all right what if you just saw the world as these puzzles okay, well, why would you do that? Either you're, like, crazy or you're, like, I don't know, like a superhero. It's like, perfect, superheroes, let's get weird, so. And that was the idea, we did it for a game jam. For those listening who don't know what a game jam is, that's basically, like, a 48-hour film challenge where you just have, like, a weekend or a couple weeks to just make a demo for a game. And the thing is, it doesn't have to be polished or, you know, even good or even finished. You just make what you can with a couple people. It's just, like, a hangout thing, you know? It's like jamming, jamming with the band. We all know what that's like. <laughs> And then uh, you just make something and put it up on like uh, itch.io is like a gaming website where they host these things and you can just post or you can go through and play people's like some of these game jams get like a thousand entries and you can just play like a thousand free like literally like two minute to ten minute games. Oh, where did you do it? Well, it's this website called itch.io, which is like Steam, but like the real, real, in like real indie hours is like itch.io. And they just have a big calendar. It's like literally you can look at a calendar and it's like every day or this weekend, there's like six jams and they're all themed. So we did one that was a dating sim game jam, but people do them that are like, you know, like the furry game jam. Like if you're a oh, furry, shit. come hang out and make games. We'll make games about whatever, you know, it doesn't even have to be, it could be like a social thing or it could be a theme where it's like the shooter jam where you can make like a, a fake first person shooter in like a weekend and see how far you get, right? Um, yeah. So it's literally anything you can think of, and you can start your own and get other people to show up, and and you know it's it's like a garage band, right? It's like the DIY garage band of <laughs> indie game making. So that's how we started it, and we did because I was like, I had this idea. We did the demo, and uh, it got covered by someone at uh, Kotaku, like the big. Oh no way! Like, they were like, "Yo, I really," because they were like, "Look, I get it. They made this in like two, three weeks. It's not going to be perfect, but it was like a fifteen-minute kind of cute idea. I really like it." y'all gonna make the full thing or what calling calling you calling you out and i was like hey if they liked it and other other people have played it too right and not just this person but like someone who was like someone who writes about games and is like plays all the games is like yo i think this is worth it i'm like hey it seems like the i like the idea but other people do too and everybody who made it was like all right let's do the full thing um but i then i we just started it off in like uh july or like September 2017, we're like, let's do the whole thing. And then it turned into this like 70,000 word, 250 plus puzzle, like full adventure game. And we just built it, you know, week after week. And now it's on Nintendo Switch. Uh, I was going to say the Switch wasn't even out yet. No, that's not true. The Switch was out by then. So. <laughs> Cue the applause. Like, Cue the applause. <laughs> this is not a case where we like got I in early and we were on the Switch yeah. first and we had success. It's where we're, if only those Irish really, guys can see him now. I know for real. One of those guys, it's like one guy worked in like animation and he does. I still I'm still friends with him on Facebook. He posts, he's like, yo, I just did like backgrounds, like painted backgrounds for this like 3D CG cartoon that's coming out. I'm like, dude. Oh shit. Go. Collabo? Calling you out. Last time I saw him was we all went to they they came a bunch of them came to America. And we all went to New York, and that was pretty cool because we went to, like, they took us to, like, supposedly, which annoys me because I forgot where it was or what the bar's name was. But they took us, we found where the 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 bar in New York that had the closest approximation to what Guinness is like in Ireland, right? Oh, really? But I don't know if you guys, I mean, you guys, have you guys drunk Guinness before? Oh, I don't sure, know if you guys sure. drink. I have no idea if you guys drink, I don't know. But, but, you know, Guinness is like, I mean, I feel like that's really common, right? And it's like, it's okay in the States, but it's really like you go over there. It's like when you eat chocolate, you go to like UK or Ireland, you eat chocolate right, and they right. have really nice, they don't have like corn syrup or like 
Hershey's chocolate over here, which doesn't taste like super good. The the it really it was like it was like indescribable. It was like the Guinness. I don't know. The Guinness was like crazy. I, really? And it was wow. so non alcoholic. It was it was tasty. It was like it was like Willy Wonka came up with this. Beer, you know, <laughs> wow. it's like Guinness. I would describe it as like Willy Wonka. If Willy Wonka made a beer, it was like super good. Wow. And then you go to you come back to the states. You're like, oh, this is kind of like a little watery. It's not. It's not perfect. I always thought Guinness kind of tasted like ass. So yeah. So that's the thing. It's weird because you go to like Ireland or London or UK or whatever, and you eat the chocolate and it tastes really good. And then you come back, it's like. Acidy. It's got this like acidic kind of taste to it. Yeah. The, the chocolate too. After I had chocolate in like Ireland, I came back and I ate like a Hershey's chocolate bar in the States and it like kind of tasted like stomach acid to me a little bit, like an aftertaste. I don't know what it is. I don't, it's in our water. All our food is like garbage. Dude, that's the thing. I've been like, I mean, I love like saving money, keeping my butt. Like I'm, I'm up at the stop and shop. I'm, I'm hitting those deals, but like. Right. Now that like I'm not going out to like work, I'm I, I mean I'm like trying to stay in and stay right. safe and not pass it on. We live like right near a Whole Foods, and I'm like, damn, uh, like I'm not going out. I'm like I'm not going to the bar. I'm not like spending a lot of money. I'm not buying right. too many video games. So I'm like, all right, I guess my 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 expensive hobby now is like buying like some <laughs> nice organic food. From Whole Foods. But I'm like, this is my. I guess if I have to, this is like what I'm spending my money on because I'm like. I'm not going out anywhere, so like, if I'm not going to a concert, I might as well buy this like, I don't know, non-GMO ham, you know? grass-fed steaks. <laughs> no, I'm not going crazy. Right? I'm still, still trying to be a frugal bastard. Just, <laughs> that was my thing when I was working on my video game. I wanted to relax. I took a long walk to stop and shop. That was like my yeah. treat to myself because all I was doing was like working on my game, and then like, yo, I'm about to walk to stop and shop and get some like turkey. So in the game, you're like, well, it's a dating sim. So you're, well, you can date four different people all yeah. at the same time, actually. Well, three right. people in one puzzle piece shaped alien. One puzzle piece, piece. exactly. So what is, what is it like writing a dating sim? Do you have to, like, understand things about 
dating and like humans and people's flaws and like strengths. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Are you saying that I, you think I've never dated anyone? Since before, you've never, you never nearly. Or do, you think or do you think I've dated a lot of people? Or maybe just like one? Too many. What do you think? Well, do you think? I I haven't dated many people, but sometimes I like to think that I understand people a little bit. You really want to like, okay. uh, you're you're like, really, right. you really want to be captured it forever on audio on the internet saying that? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, well, that's the thing, right? It's like, yeah, I mean, I've I've been in a couple of relationships before. Um, uh, my, you know, our our other writer, um, she's dated people before. She's she's been in like one serious relationship. I've been in like, I don't know. You know, I think back on this and I'm like, well, which ones? You know, when you think back, and you're like, well, which ones are really serious? You know what I'm saying? Uh, um. So, so we had a good breadth of experience, you know, like, like, like our, our, our other writer, Lex, like she lived with like a partner, right? And like, I never did. So we had like a balance of like all this dating experience. So the two of us were like, all right, well, we got the experience. We know people, we like writing characters, you know, and we were just like, let's pick some like superhero kind of type archetypes, not so superhero, but more like lovable loser versions of superheroes and, and. And just start riffing and think of fun date ideas. And then kind of the relationship drama kind of came from from that, you know? I mean, it's just, you know, if you like characters, if you like writing and you like people, really, I mean, a lot of the dating sim stuff is, I mean, some of it in the beginning is not very, you know, romantic. It's not like ooh, play in the field. It's more just like a fun hangout adventure, right? And then, I mean, that's sometimes, ain't that how it goes sometimes, right? You're just kind of hanging out with people and right. then... You know, you're looking pretty good, and now we're at Applebee's, and you know, Dollarita's on me. Um, so that's the thing is, yeah, I mean, we it's not a serious, you know, romantic simulator. You know, you're not, like, buying gifts for these characters. But it's more just about the character interaction, just the fact that it does turn romantic, right? So it's just, we just like fun characters. We have a fun concept, and we just like writing some kind of, like, I don't know, you're like a nerdy person growing up. You're just like, let me just write like this kind of, these kind of losers. And then they kind of, you know, like as as we all, you know, I'm sure we were all kind of like weirdos in like middle school and like even in high school, right? And then you grow up, you become like a cool, you know, million dollar game developer, you know, b billion dollar even. And you just kind of like, hey, all right, I take a little of my experience growing up and, and uh, learning from another person. You, know, you date someone, you learn all this stuff. So, so that's, I, I, I came from that, I guess. I don't know if that answered the question, but it's a hard question to answer, I guess. It is kind of. I think it's funny because, like, any of my friends or, like, any of my dating will come up as, like, a conversation topic. And they'll be like, oh, women want this, or men want this, or gay people want that, or lesbians want this. And, like, sometimes it sounds, I mean, sometimes I don't know, but sometimes it sounds like, it's like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't think people want that, like, what you're saying. But I, it's, I, it's, <laughs> yeah. I it's like, like that meme, though. I, that turns, it's like the meme where it's like men only want one thing. Right. And it's disgusting. And then it's like it's like a picture of like a fully modded like LED like Game Boy, like custom Game Boy. And it's just like because it means nothing. It's like men only want one thing. Nothing. Like, no. What are you guys talking about? Like, people want a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess that's the thing is, is I guess for the game was like we could do a dating sim where like people like have sex and like smoke cigarettes in bed. But we were like, I think what we think we can play, I mean, we could definitely write that, you know, if someone wants to give me a billion dollars to write like a porn game, right, like an adult game, we'll do it. But we thought what we could do best and what people would like the most is just some really fun characters that you just want to get to know more. And then it just kind of happens to turn out that it gets a little romantic, you know, so, 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 so I think like, uh, we just wrote cool characters, right? And regardless of who the character is, the main character, Pixel Girl, is such like a, She's got that big, uh, uh, cause there's a scene, right? One of the Sudoku, the superhero is like a gamer, right? She plays like an, an MMORPG and Pixel Girl literally doesn't even have a computer. She just doesn't get computers at all, but she's got that big, you know, that, that big, like, um, I have no idea what this is, but I'm happy that you like it energy, right? It's like, especially when you're dating someone and yes. like they're, you or they are telling you about something they're so into and you're like, Yo, I don't get this one bit, but I'm super happy. I'm happy to see how happy you are, and I want like tell me everything because I want to learn. Um, that's basically our main character. So it's like we wrote the main character to just be like, "Hey, I'm I'm into whatever you're into. Like, let's chill." So whatever the characters choose to talk about, she's like, "Yo, I'm I'm down with it, right? Like, let's let's learn more." And because the player is probably going to be like, "Look, I bought this game. I want to learn who these characters are." Let's hear what they're up to. So what is each character? Like, did you give each character, like, a flaw or a strength or anything like that? 
yeah i mean we just think that's interesting and like fun it's just like writing these like totally ridiculous flawed characters but like realistic you know it's like um it turned into a thing later on in the story where we purposely kind of call out their best and worst traits you know it's kind of like people getting down on themselves right i think i think a lot of the story is like people who like you know see their flaws and everybody's got flaws right it's like people taking their flaws and like okay i just see that and you know sometimes you kind of just see that and you need someone else to be like well hey look like you get really worked up about stuff you get really upset but like you're like really creative and you're like really funny you know but you don't see that as you right you don't see your best traits you only see the negative right. and that can drag you down sometimes and so that's the thing too is like dating too is sort of like well hey like i'm here to like keep you young i'm here to like find out what makes you great and remind you that and you do the same to me and we can work on our our issues you know so so we wrote these characters kind of i guess with that right it's like let's have some good let's have some bad and we'll give them all an arc so the game each of the characters has three dates right so it's like your typical like three act structure or whatever you know you, you people who go to writing school are smarter than me you know it's like the three act structure right so it's like yeah you get to know them and it's like a dating right it's like all right i get to i hang out with these people then we get kind of flirty and then at the very end of the last day ooh, we're getting we're getting oh so close so we wrote like a free act thing where it was like, all right, these characters start off, like I said, they're not good superheroes and they're kind of annoying people, but they're charming. And then they get better and they learn and, and you know, your main character learns stuff too. You know, I think that's important too is some dating games. Like I said, there's Japanese games where it's like, you're the girl surrounded by all the sexy guys. So I played a couple, I liked, I think some of those games are really fun because of the guys, right. but the girl is supposed to be like, it's supposed to be like you. You know, and it's like self-insert, but the character is just like so boring. All they do is they're like, "Oh, I can't believe he's doing this. It's so hot." But he never, they, ne she never like has an opinion, right? She's always just like, "Whatever you want, like, let's go." Um, so we definitely wrote a character who was a character and would be like, "Yes or no," or like, if one of the characters does something shitty, she's like, "Well, hold on, like, he'll back up. Like, right. <laughs> why don't we talk about this, buddy?" Right. So that's why I like. You know, the game is like, I want to do a dating sim, but it's not all flirty and sexy. It's like, oh, like, this is actually like a relationship problem that like people have had before that I've had before, you know? So tell us a little about PCI, because PCI is the most unrealistic character. Tell us about um, like what is the inspiration for that and dating and why? PCA. Yeah, like writing an un why? unrealistic characteristic, like character and then like creating something that you would want to date from that like yeah i think i think that one she might not be i mean obviously like she's a tougher sell on the romantic side of things like i said you do actually like get to know her better and 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 there's actually a part i guess it's a kind of a spoiler i guess but like she acts super silly right and like during the story uh pixel girl is like yo hold on like i said it earlier it's like can you stop being silly for a second and actually tell me like wh who you are as a part right because like Okay. I mean, to an extreme, you know those people who are always, like, goofing nonstop, and then you're like, yo, who's the real you? Can right. I, like, can we have a real moment for a sec? And so we do that, so it's not like we're just 100% silly, but we obviously wanted to have, like, a super funny, silly character, and, like, it's fun to just have, like, a mascot kind of character, right. as long as you do them right. So, like, we we have her say silly stuff and, like, weird non-sequiturs, but then we actually, like, every non-sequitur, I think, almost every non-sequitur she says in the game, like, whoa, that's totally random. By the end, like, everything, like, it, it happens or it comes true or like oh, it pays wow. off so we wrote it where it's like she's saying all this ridiculous stuff and then by the end of the game it's like oh that really they they did it right like they they made a funny like lol to random joke but then like they actually did all the work and followed through on it so we <laughs> wanted to do silly wow. wacky character but actually like follow through so that was our idea and obviously there's a puzzle team so we were like all right well a jigsaw piece is like the most visually interesting kind of thing. I mean, chess wears like a costume that's like a chess piece, but like he was supposed to be like, I mean, you remember that? Uh, I feel like everybody had or saw this as a kid the Halloween costume where it was a knight and it had the little plastic plate of armor. Do you remember this? The Halloween <laughs> yeah, costume? Yes. I feel like everybody I knew, the, like as a kid, one friend always had that outfit. It was based on that. Dollar so we wanted him dressing up like a, like, like, a, like he made it himself. Like he just looks kind of dorky. So we had that symbol, like the symbol of like the chest thing or whatever, but the jigsaw piece is just like funny. I think maybe it was inspired by like Banjo-Kazooie as well, because it's, it's like a big, you just see those big puzzle pieces, you're like, damn, like, 
Yeah. The guy in Banjo Tooie that's like a guy with a big jigsaw piece head, I think. He was not based on that. I'm literally just remembering this now, but he was like a human body with like a big jigsaw head, and he would just like talk to you and give you quests and stuff. Uh, the second Banjo Kazooie is weird. It's 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 really weird. It's 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 messed up. Um, but yeah, we we just thought like, okay, jigsaw puzzle piece with legs is just the funniest thing. I mean, yeah, it's the start of it was probably you could imagine. I think PC's personality like surprised. Well, on the stream you said she had big like Kanye energy. I'm still thinking about yeah. that. Yeah, she was very confident. Yeah, like I was with it. You know what I mean? I I didn't like she was so forthcoming that it's like even if she is a giant puzzle piece, you're starting to question like maybe I'm the idiot here. That's what's fun about her. But the thing is too is like she kind of acts like. She always kind of knows what's going on, right? And she's yeah. got, like, psychic powers. And right. that's the thing, too. As the story goes on, you, like, maybe she knows a little more than she's letting on if there's, like, about the mystery or something. She always seems like she's just kind of playing along, but maybe she kind of knows what's happening and she doesn't say anything. Right. But she's, like, an alien. Mm. But, like, do aliens really exist? But she is, like, she's not, like, a dude in a suit, right? She really right. is a giant puzzle piece. But yeah. no, there's no other aliens there's no other creatures it's just people right you see some of the townspeople too right everybody's normal except her so like what is what is the deal what <laughs> who is more she? to this yeah. and she's banned from the coffee shop for some reason i don't know why i love that because later on you go to the coffee shop again and it's because it says banned for life yeah you go to the coffee shop again and there's another sign and it says also banned for life and it's another character it's her but with a mustache no so that could be a new uh. character. so that's the thing people love that joke because it just implies that like she got banned from the cafe for something i don't know dipping her feet in the coffee or something <laughs> and then she tried to sneak back in with a fake mustache but she probably did something even worse oh, so they, they just banned her with a mustache too so oh my god that's cool we fit a lot of those tiny jokes i mean we spent right like three and a half years writing this thing so we stuck in all these little jokes and things from the beginning to literally be pay off like at the end and we had to just write that thing like four to six times. We had to rewrite that thing like four or five times. Oh just to, like, it's like a good script, like a movie script. Right? you got to write out all the stuff in the beginning and then later on. So anything Piscea says could come back. Oh, really? By the end. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, we, we, we set up stuff that comes back later. Oh, damn. <laughs> Do you get nervous? It kind of reminds me of um, like, so I actually don't remember her name, but I saw this on Twitter. There was this girl. Do you know the game League of Legends? Yeah. So there was, uh, obviously, uh, League of Legends comes out with, like, new champions, like, every so often. So um, this girl brought up this story, and I don't remember her name, but she, like, dated a Riot game maker. And, like, there's this new character who looks exactly like this girl. And uh, I, like, didn't buy it at first. <laughs> Until I found out that she had dated a Riot game developer. Like, I thought she was reaching, but then when she said that, I was like, ah, maybe. But yeah, so, like, perhaps, you know, you could see how, like, this character was based off this girl. And she was upset about it. I mean, they literally lost in court. They got uh, one of their characters. um, They lost in court because they based it off a soccer player like a football player and they just stole his look and then the guy was like that's me like, <laughs> so they y'all can't do, do that this. or pay me and they went to court and riot lost they were like all right you got us we stole you so they've done <laughs> it before they, they've definitely stolen it before have they was that a skin or a or an actual character uh uh it was a character it was so it was a dude it was a guy, I don't know the character's name, but he's like a dude with dreadlocks. And so the soccer player also had dreadlocks. So they did like a, like a skin, like a costume of the character as a soccer player. And it was like, yeah, I remember that all skin. completely around him. Like, um, which is messed up. Wow. Um, so this was semi recent because I remember that skin. That was uh, Lucian, I yeah. think, the character's name. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a lead guy, but, but yeah, I mean, I did, they've had a history of doing that before. Wow. So really, yeah. Um, do you get, like, nervous that, like, anybody in your life is going to be like, hey, James, that was very clearly based off, like, my exchange with you, or, I don't know, I'm just throwing anything out there, like... Now, can I ask you a question? 
did Tanya ask you to ask that? Yes, she Tanya. did. Tanya, and we got Kanye. We got Tanya here. Tanya. And here's Tanya. Can you now. imagine? Oh. Can you imagine? Oh my god! I had an idea for a podcast where I like try to like like have a podcast with like my like my high school crush from like you know like 20 years later yeah. and then it was like wow i don't think i could have an even worse idea ever that was probably the worst idea i ever thought of it's like why would i even do that it's messed up no uh so are you saying like yeah did i base on like any characters off like a like a partner i've had or you know dated or yeah i guess or... yeah uh no uh i would say no i'm not even nervous Good answer. uh yeah no idiot no i don't know why I that no no so what i was thinking of right is the romance stuff definitely not because i think the romance stuff is very it's it's some general romance stuff like oh I go to the cafe right oh I go to the library and then when the when the superhero stuff kind of picks up right it's sort of like because I said they're kind of losers they're 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 not being good at superheroes when the superhero stuff comes up it's like well now you guys can't avoid it because the villains doing evil stuff then the dates kind of become a mix of like like romance at the end of the world like oh we gotta stop you know it's like romance blooming on the battlefield so none of that is actually based on any like real dates I've had and again. I don't think any dates that I've had, maybe I just suck. Uh, I, I don't think any dates that I've had would be interesting enough to be a video game, right? Some people have made like autobiographical games. There's a game this I could have made it, but it's a game about it's like a fake MMO, and it's about this woman who was like learning how to like I think it's like she was like flirting with like, like someone she met on an MMO, and so you're playing what it's like to like get into like an I think like an online relationship. And it's like, oh, that's really interesting. But it feels like an autobiography, right? Right. This game is like just for fun. What I am actually worried about, right? Or what I would be worried about is like taking someone else's joke, right? It's like, oh, me and my friend riffed on this bit. We had a bit about like 12 years ago, dude. What if we had this giant puzzle piece, right? I don't want to be like that where it's like, you know, I stole the sample, right? Like right. they come back and they're like, yo, you stole my joke. Or give me a credit, right? Uh, so that's what I would be worried about. So I just took the friends that I make the most jokes with. I'm like, all right, let's let's just make the game because we're already making these jokes, right? So so that's what I would be worried about is accidentally stealing a joke that I made with, that someone else told me, right, and putting in the game. Relationship stuff. We we I haven't had an interesting relationship that's worth like making a game about, right? Right. It's it's uh I don't think many people do, right? It's like because <laughs> it would have to be like, oh, that was so crazy and stressful, like, and uh, he was like a. He was like a like a a, a snake charmer, or like a snake god. You're talking right? to musicians, oh. buddy. Uh -oh. And to be a game, right? To be like a 12, 15 hour game, you gotta have a lot of shit go wrong or crazy shit yeah. happen, oh right? My like God. to make a full game about that. So I don't have enough dates. I have enough interesting dates to fill like uh, what a twenty minute stand up bit max. Uh, <laughs> but that's it. I don't know. Like, this is a full game, right? So and then so this game. It was it like three years to make? Three and a half, yeah. Yeah, three we did the Game Jam in June 2017, and then it released on... It, it actually came out on July 5th, 2017. The demo, the, the fake right Game Jam version. Not fake, but you know what I mean? The, the really rough... Oh, sorry, the prototype right. version. That's not fake, it's real. No, we just took it down because people were looking at the... Okay. We had a different artist, so people were like, what? This looks... What is... Is this another game? We were like, oh, we gotta just take it down because we got another artist, you know? But um, we released it on October 30th. 2020 so july 2017 to october what is it like dedicating a portion of your life to a single like a single product for four yeah. years like what are some of the things that maybe people don't see like what's behind the curtain i guess like, it's like dating you know <laughs> no it's uh it's a thing with a lot of games right it's like games are fun to make like the first year right but then you really see like i mean no offense right people get busy people got stuff to do this wasn't my full-time job I'm not going to say anybody who works on a game for fun and then stops is like, that's, that's fine. But it's right. You kind of see like, all right, we did this for like a year. Like now are, are we going to actually like do the thing? Are we actually going to like finish it? Right. Right. Cause games are like, I mean, it's like, you know, I could write with my friend, like a 70,000 word book in like six months. Right. I mean, it'd be bad. We edit it for another like year. We work on it for like two years done. But it's like video games is like, man, like, Okay, you got a cool story. You got a save system, right? You got like a loading screen. You got like you got like three D assets. You got to do all this stuff, right? And like over like twenty people worked on this game. Like like so many people, and it was like we had a publisher, and like they brought on some people. They brought wow. on like a marketing guy and like a producer, and my dad came out. I mean, like so many people have to come together, and you got to have someone who 
wants to finish it, right? And I was the director or whatever. I, I feel like director is kind of like snobby to say, but it was like, you know, I'm the guy who's like, all right, we got to finish this, man. Like, and we got to keep the energy up for like two more years to like right, actually yeah. get it done and make a bigger, you know, game that we did. You know, you can make a fun, smaller game of the year, right? So, um, but the way we did it was like, look, let's just make something that's like, gonna wow people you know and have right. this kind of polish to it and and the graphics and like if you notice like if you go on the menu all the like the options menu it's like wiggling and like bouncing and there's like a scrolling pattern of gears so we did all these little weird visual effects and so we like went in and like went deep you know we could have put it out earlier but it wouldn't have been like as special you know so many ways to do it but it was just it's just a matter of just wanting to finish it and then having like a clear idea of what the ending is, you know, and, 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 and it's like a movie, right? I mean, I, games get compared to movies though. Cause I feel like people know what it's like to make a movie. Right. Or at least they would know, like, you know, the director is not the guy who's got the camera, right. There's like a director of photography. There's a dude who did the sound. There's a dude who did the music or like 12 dudes who did the music and an orchestra. So I feel like people get that. It's like that, right. You think about filming a movie, and I feel like more uh, more now, because I feel like people watching Netflix, right? People just know more about movies and making movies, right? It's like you figure you watch a movie and you're like, somebody is not in this movie and they got lunch for everybody every day. And they are like just as important as the dude holding the microphone for the sound, right? Like they are just as important. So it's like that. I feel like people would get that now. I would say, you know, think about it when you think about a movie and how many people are behind the camera. Same with games, you know, exact same with games. So what would you say, besides completing the game, besides finishing the game, what was your biggest success in those three and a half years? And then what was, like, your biggest hiccup? In I guess, like, finishing the, the route of, of chess or writing the ending and getting the ending really good was tough because my first drafts are, like, real, real rough. And I hate, like, throwing stuff out, right? I hate throwing stuff out. So I still never really, I still got to learn, like, when I write an outline, it doesn't always come out like the outline. So, like, our other writer is always like, yo, this part is crap. And then I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I throw that out, and, and she's like, I like this. And it's harder when she's like, I like this, but I don't like this. And then you have a middle part, you're like, we're going to rewrite the middle, but I already wrote it. Like, I already know how this part gets to this part, but now it has to be different. So... Finishing the story, right? Finishing, basically, I mean, we wrote like a novel, right? It's like the length of a novel. Right. So finishing like a novel, it's like I wrote a novel already. Like people, like their achievement is like I wrote a novel. And I had to go write the novel and make a video game, right? right. Like all in one. And I had to make the puzzles too. Some of the puzzles. I worked with a team. But that was something else too I would say is a big success is that I was real worried because people who love these puzzles, like if you go online – People are like obsessed with these puzzles. They like really, really love these puzzles, and they, you know, they if they really love them, they want like the the, the creme de la creme, the best of the best the puzzles. And like I like them, but like it's like it's like if you play a lot of video games. I was fully prepared to say I friggin' love video games, and I'm not good at making them. Right? Like I was prepared to learn that lesson. Do you know what I mean? Like just because I really like something doesn't mean I'm good. Mm. So with the puzzle stuff, I'm like, yo, I love these puzzles. Like if all my puzzles are crap, right? Like, and people hate it. So that was an, a, an achievement too, is people were playing it. And like, there was like a reviewer for this like Nintendo website who gave us like a nice score. And was like, hey, the puzzles, they're sick. They're dope. No way. I, play a lot, I play a lot of these games. I think the puzzles are sick. And I was like, thank no God. Because I was worried, right? Like, because I, when I wrote the story with our other writer, she was like, okay, you please me, right? This is good. So I'm like, right. if you like it, I know it's going to be at least this good. But the puzzles, I was like, oh, crap. Like, I'm the one who loves these puzzles. I think they're okay, but, you know, no one else on the team loves them. So, so that was a big achievement. <laughs> biggest challenge, biggest challenge was just uh, leading, like, a 20-person team, right? It's, like, getting everyone together and, like, being the producer, basically, right. like I was, I was like Tommy Wiseau over here, I'm oh like my God. director, producer, editor, right? Like, <laughs> I mean, it's funny to see his name in that, but it's like, yeah, I mean, to produce, to get everyone together, like run a slide. And then like our, our publisher showed up and they have like a Slack or like a Discord channel. So I'm like working with some of the team on Slack and then I go over to Discord and like try to coordinate the marketing and like teach some people how to make puzzles because because they're really good artists, but they don't know how the puzzles work is like the logic. So I had to like train them on it. So I was just trying to like 
being in the middle of everything and then trying to like do any work. And this is with any job, right? It's like if you're like a like a manager at like your job, right? It's like spend a lot of time working with people and training people up and getting them good, and then you're like. Dude, it's like five o'clock. I was supposed to do some stuff. Like, what am I supposed to do? Right? So it was like that, right? So for my next game, maybe I'll get a producer. Or maybe I'll just get more people and just be dumber, you know? Or I'll just say, ah, I'm the producer. Someone else can make it. Like, I'll just get cool people to hang out. So oh, that was man. the big challenge. Being at the center of everything and then, like, yeah, trying to write the story, right? Yeah. I put off the last date of chess. I wrote chess, chess date one, chess date two, and it was, like, chess date three. Oh, that took me, like eight months because I was just doing everything else you know so Your favorite character? It's gotta be Pixel Girl. Classic, classic. The main character. She's gotta classic. be my favorite. She's the best. You She's know the most what? mature. Hey, and you nothing... wrote what you wrote for Chess. Like, I wrote have... Chess's story, but but the main story bits. I wrote a lot of those. I, I, I mean, with our writer, but we kind of took turns. So I wrote. It's not like I didn't write some characters, right? It's like I wrote. Yeah, yeah. You know, we both wrote equal amounts of the main character. Do you have like a personal there. connection to any? One the character. main character. I mean, the main character is literally a character who just loves these types of puzzles and like yeah. is obsessed with puzzles and stuff. And I'm like, 
I love these puzzles, and I think there's a lot of people who play games or, or just kind of like nerdy, like obsessive people, and they get their hobbies, and sometimes it's hard if you want to geek out about your hobby, and someone, you're at a party, you're like, I'm not going to go pop off with my game dev to someone random. I mean, if they get it, then yeah, but like, I'm just not going to pop off, so what am I supposed to do? So it was that connection of like, look, like I got passion, but like I got to figure out how do I be a person around that too, right? Also, she's she's dumb. The main character is like dumb. Is she dumb? Like she's not dumb. She's, 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 she's kind of dumb. She's kind of dumb in the best way. She just like means well, but she doesn't get some stuff sometimes. <laughs> like she doesn't know how to work a laptop. Like for real, she only like she only has a phone. She doesn't know how to work a computer. So, but that's fun. Is like she just is super nice and endearing, and she doesn't always get it. And that, that's just always a fun character to have, right? Is like go with the flow. Like I like what you're into. I don't really get it, but let's go. Yeah, I'm gonna pull out my spandex and let's let's go out. <laughs> I was gonna say the puzzles are so funny because like all of them are so cool, and then some of them are really like abstract. So you're like, what am I drawing? <laughs> like, oh, as you're making it. Yeah, and then it like comes out, and it's like. Like, I had one last night, I think it was, like, mean guy or bad guy, and it's, like, these two shifty eyes or something like that. Oh, the, the, was it the, was it on Chess's date? I think it was on Chess's date. In like, the cafe, where he's talking about the evil grandmaster. Right. The, right? <laughs> and it's, like, yeah, it's this idea, she's, like, what is, and it looks like a kid's cartoon drawing of, like, an evil guy. Yeah, I mean, like, two evil eyes and teeth that are just the lines down, because it's easy to solve. Yeah, I was just, like, she, he won't give any concrete details of what this is so why don't we just draw like her thinking of like a creepy cartoon face yeah but then yeah others are really detailed right that's right. the trick is like the 15 by 15 puzzles are obviously there's more pixels so they're more detailed but then with the five by fives and the 10 by 10s you've got to get kind of creative to have it look like something so, so we well, have some that are just like really abstract that are funny like the five by five the first one you solve is of darkness it's just you literally oh yeah the darkness all black, so and it's like yeah. darkness it's like oh Duh, duh, yeah, it's, I filled them all in. It's all black. Like, okay. <laughs> so what was, like, the process coming between, like, trying to figure out how to do the pixel puzzles of, like, the very literal objects and then, like, the more abstract ideas? Some of them were just first try. I mean, some of them are, like, obvious. Like, I mean, not like we didn't think about the concept, but some of it's, like, we would just make puzzles and sometimes they just fit the story. Like, we had a puzzle designer just making some dope puzzles and right. then we had a cute moment with, uh, like, a moment where uh, Sudoku gets really tired so she really can't, like, walk like she's wiped out right she's like super tired um and pixel girl's like yo hop on my back like i'll give you a piggyback ride it's like a cute moment and she's like I, yo i'm not doing that and pixel girl's like like hop on the hop on the choo-choo train like i'm the pixel girl train hop on the pixel train <laughs> like choo-choo and then we have a puzzle of a train and it's like yeah. hop on the train because that's how she's seeing herself but we just happen to write that joke and have the puzzle it's like all right on to puzzle number 274 right but um <laughs> yeah some of them, the abstract, I mean, some of them I wrote the jokes. That's a tough thing, too, right? Is like, I felt like I had a little more fun with that kind of stuff because I was, like, doing the puzzles and I saw the whole picture. That's something I want to do if we do another game is, like, make sure people are all involved because it's like, okay, I'm sitting there with the script. I could go in and spice it up and add in a little puzzle joke. Sometimes the writer, though, you know, she's like, I'm just writing. She's saying, I'm going to go, I got to go play the game, right? Because, like, I know I wrote the game, but I don't know the full game because some of the things you added are the puzzles that I don't know about, you know? Like, I don't know you added puzzles to my writing. So I kind of worked in some extra stuff here and there where I felt it it fit, you know? Um, All right. I might actually, like, extend the scene a little bit to get a little puzzle joke in there. Or just add, you know, because it's expensive to, like, do anything in a video game. It's like animation, right? If you need anything to happen, it's expensive. Right. So I'm like, oh, there's a part where it's like, oh, let's make a little blanket for it. Let's, like, cuddle up. Um, and so it's like, okay, well, if we have our amazing illustrator, like, the person who did a lot of character art, do that, she's going to do a good job, and that's right. going to cost me some bucks. <laughs> Not that I don't want to pay her, but I'm like, and she's busy working on her stuff, right? True, so true, I'm like, yeah. I can just make a little puzzle on my own of a little blanket for it, and you can see it, and you get a little better idea. Right. It just fills up the world a little more in, like, a way that, like, she's busy doing more amazing like a background that takes forever and i can just make this puzzle in a couple hours balancing that workload and then one question that um a lot of people have been asking me about your game is why didn't you have tryhard do the music for it how many people have been asking i want names i want addresses I want uh, well they spoke on anonymity because uh they didn't want to uh, well i definitely heard george say it twice so yeah 
Any thoughts on that? Yeah, don't. Uh, George is well, watching, this, so. Yeah, so when, when I started out, I had this, you know, the directors have their, like, code of, of ethics. I said, uh, no posers. Oh, <laughs> said, no, no fake. I said, what are you, wow, you going to do? Yeah, you said, actually, no you know what? For real, yeah. though, for real, though, we have some, uh, am, I allowed to, am I allowed to even joke about this as drama? We have some fake bit. I'm sorry. We got some fake oh, bit. Shit. In the game. Oh, shit. We got some fake 8-bit stuff, so. Ooh, we might have to us or whatever so come yeah. after us. Well, no, that's okay. You screwed the, the, up. The, the, now you know better for next time to get us for the game. Everybody the makes mistakes. Bit. That's what I call chip to call real bit. <laughs> real bit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love, I love just being outside of that. But no, um, no, it was the, I mean, to talk seriously about the music, it was the guy, we didn't even work with him on new music before. The game I did before this one was like a cyberpunk game. And we didn't have oh, uh, yeah. any new music. We just licensed other people's music. And we got like Mitch Murder and we got like uh um Oh god, I'm forgetting everyone's name because like there's so many oh, like Shirobon. We got Shirobon yo, we got no Shirobon up in the joint. Damn. And we got like Electric Children. We got a couple, we got some chippy stuff. We got we got Trey Frey. Oh wow, oh, man. Oh we got shit. Trey Frey to give us a track. I'm just it's all coming back to me. I right, I haven't done this. I, I you know, I put that game out like four and a half years ago. Um, so so but we just got people's existing tracks, right? Like you guys did the work, can we pay you like some money, right? right. Some undisclosed amount of money and just license it just, you know, using the game. And then right. like, some little, you know, Trey Frey was like we, oui, right? He's French, right? He was like we. Oui. Um I'm just like J Sweet. J Sweet. He said this game is J Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> So this guy that we just like found, we found him on just like Reddit. It was like, yo, like synthwave Reddit. Wow. He's chilling on here. And people just posted music. That's, hey, you're an indie developer. You, you want music for your game? Number one, go to twitch.tv slash tryhard music. That's where you find your music. <laughs> That's the first. Second, second chance you, you're out of options. I don't know. Go on Reddit. Some people post music. No, but it's like, you know, it's like, but we just found this guy. He was like, cool. His name was uh, Capsule King. And he did some like kind of synthwave tracks. He's like, cool. We'll just you know, buy one of your tracks, right? Or license one of your tracks. And then he was like, yo, I want to actually make some music for games. And he did the game jam with us. He was there from the beginning. Oh, cool. Oh, actually, wow. the theme song of the game, like when you start the game and it's playing that like super funky thing, that was yeah. from the game jam. I'm just like, this dude hit it in one. We'll keep it. He did yeah. some other songs that we like remade or did one in a different vibe with like, because he was, we were obviously all rushing stuff. So it's like, dude, the song you made in like, a, like an hour is like, we could redo this because we don't have to, rush right. it to like hit the game jam but um yeah we worked with him and then we worked with uh we worked with uh, uh absurdist long time oh, yeah. uh, collaborator with, with with some of our other game projects he did a he did a song i actually have no idea i think he just like sold us a beat that he already worked on i don't think he wrote it for alaska but the cyberpunk game he did he, he gave us a song that was i think it was like unreleased i think he'd already made it but it was unreleased so we're like all right you want but then he actually wrote a song for the game and got a vocalist to come on and do it. Wow. And we just figured like he was kind of in the vibe. You know, his music was kind of in the vibe of the game. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's the story of the music, you know. Could have had a amazing. collab track, but uh, it's more paperwork you gotta write yeah. if I gotta get another team member on. But, you know. All the music, like, it's like it's varied, but it sounds like it could have been written all by the same person. Very it is so that's the thing every song except you're not going to hear absurdist stuff until like like you're like uh 14 hours in you're like in the last hour of the game oh really? that's the thing too i mean jack wrote a song and it has vocals sung by like this dude who's got like thirty thousand twitter followers or whatever wow some dude i don't even know him Jack was like, yo, I got this friend. He's going to sing. Oh, my God. One take, and then he vanished, so we couldn't get ed I edits. And he was like, no, I can't even get in contact with this guy. He's gone. I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, I was like, yo, okay. Um, But then, like, uh, that stuff is all, like, hidden. So we're like, how do we, like, this song is, like, dope, but, like, it's a spoiler. Like, we can't release this. Uh -huh. So we have all this cool stuff that we're like, yo, people better, like, buy this game and then, like, word of mouth, like, make us go viral because... We're not allowed to talk about it because we'll just spoil the ending. This is the thing. All the music you hear is all that one dude, Capsule King. So anything you've heard is just him. It's all just him. So, so you just finished this game. Uh, yeah. It just came out the day before Halloween. Are you looking on to the next project? Are you chilling Are we getting for a DLC? 
Yeah, what's the deal? Game's got to sell well enough to do DLC, but I have an idea for DLC. Ooh. And it's going to be uh it's going to be like Christmas special. You know like how like you Garfield Christmas special. Yeah. Just, we want to do that. But we want to like we want to do it weird. So like, you know like in a show or like in a you know they do like this like like the day I'll go to the beach, you get to see everybody in their swimsuits chilling and stuff. Yeah. We want to do that, but we want it to be part of the Christmas DLC. Yeah. So like, yeah we're going to hit the beach, like anime episode, we all go to the beach. Yeah. But it's it's like January, so they all get to the beach in their swimsuits, they're like, this sucks. Like the, like the, like the beach is frozen. Uh, and then like they like get into, you know, wacky hijinks. So we want to do Christmas DLC. But uh, but the game's got to sell at least, uh, at, least, at least a cool mail before we can get that popping, you know. <laughs> Calling you out, calling you out. Uh, uh, who's rich? That's got some money for me. <laughs> Elon, Elon, Elon. I hate uh, you, Papa Elon. <laughs> hate that guy. Call, call him you the fuck out. Come on the show. <laughs> Come on the show, Elon. What with you? Uh, Put your money where your mouth is, dog. Exactly. And then I'll go right from between the lips of this yoink. Oh. <laughs> Uh, what are we talking about? I'm sorry. Yeah, so I want to do DLC, but the game's got to sell, you know, decently well. We've got a secret idea. Not DLC, but something else we might be uh, cooking up. Um, we, we, we might cook it up next year. Um, we might be cooking little, little B style, right? Little, little B base god style. Um, and then, uh, I always got ideas, man. I'm thinking about a new game. I was actually working and learning some After Effects, but before oh, it was... Shit interrupted come on this podcast you'll you'll know so oh. so right after this right after i turn it off i'm gonna get right back to after oh shit little, little, little piece <laughs> of something for uh for a new game i got an idea i got an idea i want to do something uh, you know it's so funny uh did you guys play like the sega dreamcast at all oh no, just no. a little bit this yeah so the baby. Games. there's there's this i i realized this guy there were these two rhythm games for the dreamcast there was this one called uh space channel five yeah, oh, for sure. sure. Yeah, you play. Oh, you played that. You know it. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, do you know the game Rez? You heard of that game Rez? Yeah. R-E-Z. Yeah, Rez is dope. Rez. R-E-Z, right? Rez yeah. is amazing. It's like super abstract. You're like a polygon guy in space. You're like shooting stuff, and it's kind of like a rhythm game. So I didn't realize this. I was watching this documentary. Shout out! This is channel called um, Archipel. A R C H I P E L. They do all these interviews with like the big Japanese game developer dudes. Like they did an interview with everybody who ever did stuff on the Dreamcast. And I found out the guy who did Res and Space Channel Five, same dude. Really? Wow. Yeah. I made this super goofy anime game where you're like a cheerleader. It's like DDR where you're like matching the patterns, but you're like a cheerleader. He's like, yo, cause cause like you know, you hear like Japanese people, like game developers, they're just like up in the office, like literally they live there. Like, I mean, you know, when they're making games, they're just like, that's where I'm at, right? I'm right. like working all day to make games. So he's like, yeah, I work, I come in in the morning and I'd be working on this goofy ass, like super silly, funny game. And then when it got to be night, I'd be like, I need a break. And he started working on this like darker, creepier, like weirder game. And, and I love that idea, right? It's like the day and night kind of thing that happened, like with his own life. He's just like, that was my mood. I mean, huh. the day let's be funny, I and mean, the night let's be weird. Huh. So I want to do something that's kind of like that, where it's like, all right, we did the funny, weird stuff. We get some dark moments in the game, but now I want to go kind of like, kind of creepy, kind of kind of evil. No, not evil. Well, like, you know, maybe more like a horror thing, a more atmospheric kind of moody thing, you know? Well, give me a hint of that, because you're very, I feel, I feel like you're very up. Like, you're very, uh, you're so bright whenever I see you. It's like such an up I'm like the thing. Joker, baby. like What's scary, I got, I'm James? crazy inside. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I mean that's what's fun, right? Is like if you if you're uh, uh, living vicariously. I, mean, I know, right? I'm a I'm a storyteller, man. You know, I can I can tell a bunch of stories, right? Mm-hmm. And if I can't tell the whole thing, I got teammates that can help me get there, right? So like, I got I I, I feel like you know that's the strength of any good you know storyteller, filmmaker, right? I feel like storyteller. I feel like I'm making myself sound super snobby, but you know what I mean, right? Is like. Um, I'm always trying to catch myself from sounding snobby, so please, uh, buzz me during the podcast. Go <laughs> audio effects, just bleep me out if I sound annoying. No, but you know what I mean. It's like I did something fun and silly, and I think I can do that pretty well. But now I want to kind of step out there and do something serious. Like it's easy to make something funny, right? right? Like I feel like a lot easier to make something funny that people like, like a comedy. But then it's like, all right, if I'm gonna do something like scary or creepy. You gotta try, right? You gotta like build the, the tension and like. Right. I mean, you can make like a goofy slasher movie, 
but well, if you want to make something really creepy, exactly, yeah. And I don't want to make something like campy. I want to actually make something that's like, whoa, like wow. that's pretty, like that's scary. Um, that made me make uh, pee pants a little bit, you know. What I'm <laughs> um, but yeah, I want to try something that's challenging, right? Too, and and that's the thing. Our illustrator, right? She made all these super cute superheroes, right? Um, super cute superhero, super art. You make a game like this, you start saying super all the time. Um, but she has like a YouTube channel. Uh, you can check her out. She's a Strawberry Nightmare on Twitter, or on Twitter and or on YouTube and Twitter, I guess. Um, I'm just so used to saying Twitter. But she does horror cartoons on like YouTube. Oh, wow. really? She does horror stuff. And she was like, yo, you want me to draw what? Like, like spandex and capes and stuff? So uh, I want to do a game where I'm like, all right. You did a superhero. Now I want you to draw some some acts of blood, some oh messed up blood, oh my god, and oh some me. limbs, oh my, and some fingers <gasps> attached to a hand, not cut off. They're, that, that'd be messed up, but just regular fingers. So no, they're that, cut off and bloody. So yeah, I want to do something uh, scary. Kinda... I want to do something horrifying. I'll make people make pee pants. Quote me, beautiful James. I want to make people make pee pants. I won't spoil it, but, but all right. You, if you want to see some, if you want to see us experiment with some horror. There's a scene we definitely wrote to be a mock horror scene. I mean, it's a real horror scene, but it's like, obviously it's in the goofy dating sim, so it's not like, no one gets killed, but crossword. Finish crossword to Raul. Re- oh, I was, gonna, I was thinking you were talking about like the Puma scene with Pisia. That's, that's like tense, like, ooh, what's, that's suspenseful, but it's yeah. not like scary, right? We wrote a scene where I had a friend text me today, and she's like, yo, like, that creeped me out. Oh. Really? Yeah, it's it's near the end of it because because you know it's like there's a mystery building up, right? And like as the mystery develops, maybe some people are in on what's really happening, and maybe it's in their best interest to kind of keep the status quo, right? So if that's threatened, things might get scary. Damn. Well, I'm super interested. I'm just about to get the dates three with everybody. Well, you did all dates one and two. Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, the juicy! Oh, it's like it's like you it's like a succulent steak. You're just about to get into the middle, <laughs> oh, the tastiest bits. Boy. I'm excited. That's the thing. I that's the thing. I see people tweeting about the game, and it's nice when you wrote a game that's got very specific like sections because you're like, oh, this section. All right, in about two hours. Oh no! <laughs> like, oh, I can't believe they did that, and it happens every time. Right? It's like we wrote it away where it's like I know it's gonna happen next, and I'm sitting in my like in my chair at home on Twitter, and I'm like. <laughs> yeah, I'm the Joker, baby. I I planned this out. <laughs> so yeah, so we did a little bit of mock horror stuff in there, and then the ending is some scary stuff. Like really? you know, it's got a villain, right? But it's got like you know in the superhero movies, like some messed up stuff happens sometimes. So. Shit. And then and then where can people find you? Uh, are you talking like zip code and everything? Or? No, just the social. Media. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm a, I'm I'm at tw- I'm 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 on Twitter at I'm at Twitter on https security extra colon slash slash twitter.com slash do they have the at in the website or is it just slash yeah you can just name? be like at i'm at just, just, no I, i'm just being a jerk it's it's i'm <laughs> at beautiful james so you go to twitter.com slash beautiful james if you know the game beautiful joe it's that but james i know v beautiful is, is not a word but 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 but